Just look at that, that's incredible. Wow. Hey everyone, John Reed here, host of Learn to Stargaze and author of 110 Things to See with a Telescope. This is SV Boney's new SV48P. Now this telescope is designed to be a very high quality beginner telescope for visual observing. It may also function as an ultra low cost refractor for deep sky astrophotography, though we'll have to put that one to the test. Earlier this year, SV Boney sent me this telescope and one of their new eyepieces for me to test. Well, the eyepiece was great, the telescope, well, things didn't work out quite as well. While the quality of the component seems high, I knew something was wrong as soon as I actually looked through the eyepiece. The stars, well, they simply weren't round. And I tried pointing it at Saturn and it was just a distorted mess. I realized that the lens had a massive astigmatism, which is when light from the horizontal axis and light from the vertical axis come into focus at different focal lengths. And I wasn't the only one to experience this issue. I posted the unboxing video of this telescope onto YouTube as a short. Immediately others pointed out in the comments that they'd been experiencing issues and that they were waiting on replacement objective lenses from SV Boney. Anyway, earlier this week, this box showed up and it looked like it was shipped via submarine with a screen door. But inside the box is the new lens assembly. Let's swap out this lens for this lens and then put this telescope to the test. Now I think we can do this without any tools. This should twist. There we go. That's really interesting that it's a different size. So this came off like this, which means this should simply go in like this. This is quite a bit heavier. Makes me wonder if this is a different lens configuration altogether. You know what, maybe I can check. New lens, old lens. I think this will come apart. I don't wanna get them mixed up because this is the one with the astigmatism. Will this just come out? It will, okay. All right. That is clearly doublet optics right there. Now this is technically garbage, so I'm not really worried about the fingerprints on that one. All right, I'm gonna put the old lens assembly in the box. Here's the new lens assembly. Do I wanna take this out? I just wanna see if it's any different. No, that's still two lenses, but they're a heck of a lot thicker. Okay, I gotta drop this back in. That was exciting. And the dew shield. And the dew shield. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put this on the mount, and then we'll try to get that dew shield on. There we go. Lens cap. What I'm gonna do to get this telescope ready for observation, I guess for one, this needs to rotate. Okay, so I need the Allen wrench again. Oh no, you guys know me and Allen wrenches. Okay, we did have one in here. Really? Oh, there it is. All right, here we go. Here's the Allen wrench in the last video, and we'll need to move these back when we switch it over to do astrophotography. See, I covered up the clock on the microwave, so you have no idea how long this is taking me. Okay, that's loose. Now that that's level for visual astronomy, let's tighten it back up. Remind me for next time, this Allen wrench is right here. So to get this ready for visual observing, we're gonna add just a regular generic diagonal and a basic red dot finder that will go right here. I put the second bracket here for astrophotography gear. And then for the eyepiece, I'm gonna test this with a 10 millimeter Bader Hyperion eyepiece. All right, let's take this outside and do some observing. All right, we're here in downtown Halifax, and we've got it pointed at the moon, which is super high in the sky right now. And I'll have to say, it is just incredible. There is a slight tinge of chromatic aberration. It's got a blue tinge on one side, a yellow on the other, but you can sort of ignore it. Okay, so now I can move over to Jupiter. We're here. Might need to stand up for this. 
yeah, so with Jupiter, those two cloud belts stand out right away for Galilean moons. Chromatic aberration is a lot more noticeable in Jupiter, but it doesn't distract from your ability to see those cloud belts. And I bet if I really concentrate it, let my eyes adjust to looking at the planet that I could see the great red spot if it were on this side of the planet. All right, so here we've turned the SV48P into a super basic astrophotography telescope for planetary and lunar photography. So this setup consists of an ASI Air Mini and a ZWO ASI 224MC camera. Now this is a designated planetary camera, so the sensor is fairly small. Up on the screen, we've got Jupiter and there is no computer in this mount. So I basically just need to use the slow motion controls to get Jupiter in the screen. And this can be a bit of a challenge, but it can also be kind of fun. You can zoom in. Okay, I can see two of the moons there. All right, now, if we want to see the cloud belts on Jupiter, what we need to do is basically just turn the exposure time way down. It's a bit of a one second delay here with the ASI Air. Okay, let's just keep cranking that exposure time down. So it seems like Jupiter's drifting this way. So I'm gonna hit record. Let's see if we can get about 20 seconds of video here on Jupiter. As it's recording, we can zoom in, see those cloud belts, zoom out. All right, there's 25 seconds. I'm gonna stop it right there. All right, now we can use lucky imaging to see if we can improve the view of Jupiter. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go here into the menu, hit stacking. I'm gonna select our latest video. All right, I'm assuming it says Mars just because that's the last planet I looked at, even though that this is Jupiter. It takes about a minute to complete the stack. It's also very cold out here, so I don't know how much longer I can do this. I feel like this is one of those loading bars that goes slower and slower as soon as you get closer to 100%. Almost there. My hand is frozen right now. Okay, check. All right, there's the stacked image, but not processed. We should be able to click that button. And now there is a way here to edit this. Now here we can make our adjustments. We can zoom in, we can increase the sharpness. Wow, look at that amount of detail that we got with this telescope. This is incredible. And you can even see one of the Galilean moons here. There should be one over here too, right there. Just look at that, that's incredible. Wow, it's doing some quick processing on the phone. Contrast, Let's see if we can get rid of that haze around it. Okay, I'm gonna save that image right there. That is just wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna click done here and let's go over to the moon. Now the moon is right next door. Okay, wow, there it is. Okay, now we've got the moon. I'm gonna really take that gain way down. There you have it. All right. Let's see if we can take a short video here and use lucky imaging as well. Hit record. Let's just do five seconds. There we go. Back over here. Let's see if I go lunar surface. There's our latest video. Next, stack. There we go. Check. And increase the sharpness. And there we go. There is a lunar image taken with this telescope. Fantastic. I'm just going to save that as it is. All right, before we end the video, just one more fun thing. We've got the telescope here on this German equatorial mount. Now, I bought this mount for about $400 a few years ago, used. Anyway, this is the same setup we had last night for planetary photography, so still a planetary camera, not designed for deep sky astrophotography, but we have pointed the telescope at Orion. So I've got it focused here, and I think this is as good as the focus is gonna be. Uh, we can test that like this. There we go. So we can see the trapezium of stars there in the middle of the Orion Nebula is in focus. Let's scoot over to preview and let's just do a 30 second exposure. Without guiding, I think 30 seconds is the most we're gonna be able to get without significant star trails. So I think we'll just leave it at that. The sensor is very tiny. So we're quite zoomed in on this nebula. The stars are gonna look bloated, but check it out. We can see quite a bit of detail. Not bad. There's one more thing we can try. If we switch from preview 
to live and then set the exposures to 30 seconds. Now, I'm not taking any calibration frames like flats and darks and biases. Um, it might not look a whole lot better, but we'll see what happens. So let's just hit it here. And I'm gonna let this run for two or three minutes and see if this image gets even better. All right, well, here's about three minutes of exposure. Not looking too bad, but again, we're not guiding, so we are getting some star trails. I think I'm gonna stop it right here, but this does show what this telescope uh, is capable of with the meagerest of equipment. All right, let's stop that. Let's save that image. All right, and here I'm giving it a shot, stacking one second exposures. Check it out. That's pretty cool. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the SV48P telescope from SV Boney. Subscribe to learn to stargaze to take your stargazing experience to the next level. Add one of my books to your wish list. If you'd like to support the channel, hit the join button at the bottom of the video. And remember, the future is looking up.